Welcome back to State of Belief Radio, everyone. I'm Welton Gaddy. Greg Pallast is a New York Times best-selling author and an investigative journalist who has been covering voter purges across the country for the past several election cycles. Uh, we've talked with him on this show before, as you well know. His explosive new report for Al Jazeera America aired in two parts earlier this week, and I am very happy to have Greg back with us on State of Belief Radio. Greg, welcome back. Glad to be with you again. What little media attention has been paid to voter suppression has focused on the voter ID laws as passed in Texas and elsewhere. So please talk about what you've found and how far-reaching what you've found is. Well, what we found is something ugly. Uh, We spent six months, and I had a whole team crossing the country, as I did, to find out, to dig into something called interstate cross-check. The claim is that uh, millions, in fact, that there are three and a half million voters who have illegally voted twice. It's the same election, but in two different states. Now, that's quite a crime wave because uh, voting twice, two states, is, is a felony crime. And you get two to ten years prison for, such a, for pulling off a stunt like that. So are there really, I had a simple question, if there are three million illegal voters, how come you haven't arrested them? What, who are these people? Mm-hmm. And we spent months trying to get the list out of these states' hands. It turns out, and here is also something a little suspect, of the 27 states involved in this cross-check program, 24 are controlled by Republican elections officials. This month, we finally broke through about a month and a half ago and got the actual list. I got 2.1 million names of supposed evil double voters who are stealing the election. And as it turns out, as it turns out, This list is nothing but a list of common names. The only thing that matches people, the only thing, no Social Security number match, no middle name match, no date of birth match, even though it was advertised as as matching those things. The only thing is first and last name. So you end up with a lot of people named David Lee, Joseph Washington, um, Mr. There's a lot of Chungs and Jacksons and Kims on there, basically by using common names. They are taking out the voters of color. You're talking about black people, Hispanic voters, and Asian Americans. Because according to the U.S. Census, a voter of color is is 80% more likely to have one of the thousand common names in America. The census gives us a breakdown by name, the ethnic breakdown of every name. If uh, There are 86,020 John Jacksons in the United States. But according to this thing, that would mean that that one guy named John Jackson voted 86,000 times. That's literally how this list is put together. It would be laughable. It would be slapstick if it didn't mean that millions of people are in the process of losing their vote. 41,000 people have already lost their vote in the state of Virginia, Mm. and that's one of 27 states. Greg, I I want to be dead certain that I'm understanding this and that our listeners are understanding it. You're saying that the charge that has caused panic about double voting is false, and it is a pretense used in order to clean names from voter rolls that will deny people to vote who have a right to vote. Yes, that's exactly it. And, and in fact, by the way, to find out if you are a double voter, if you are uh, uh, on the lam from the uh, double voting police, you can go to aljazeera.com, look uh, in the uh, article that I wrote by Greg Palast, uh, halfway down there's a box. Mm-hmm. Stick your name in there, first name and last name, and we have a million names from Georgia and Virginia and see if you are one of the double voters. Mm. And all you have to do to be nailed as a double voter, to have your right to vote uh, put at risk, is to simply have a common first and last name. And, and say they, a... know, they know when they do this, that they're going to get the John Jacksons, who are African-American, and the, uh, and the uh, Asian-Americans, 
uh, are really very much at risk. Okay, if we didn't have people's attention when we started this interview, we, we certainly have it now. So say again, who's behind this double voting panic? Well, you got the, it started with the Republican Secretary of State, Chris Kobach, who's kind of the Catherine Harris of 2014. He has said um, on television again and again that there are double voters, people voting twice in two states. He says it's really easy to catch them. But they haven't, you know, Obama won't, doesn't want to catch them because they're his voters, and that's true. If you look at this list, it's overwhelmingly Democratic. That's because, by the way, black people tend to vote Democratic overwhelmingly, Hispanics two to one Democratic, and Asian Americans, most people don't know this, vote three quarters, three out of four Asian Americans vote Democratic. So if you go after Asian Americans, you're going after Democratic votes. It's, it's, so while it's ugly in racial, the ultimate goal, obviously, is partisan. Now, I am not, I don't care which party wins. It's not my job. I, I've done uh, exposés on lots and lots of Democrats and Republicans, but clearly this is, this is something which is uh, ugly partisan flavor, especially because it's using race. And they know. I was in the office of the Asian American Legal Defense Fund in Atlanta, Georgia. And there happened to be a gentleman in his 80s named Mr. Kim, which is not surprising for Koreans. Um, and we found his name, Sue Kim, on the double voter roll. Sue Kim is very much like John Smith in America, in, in, uh, among white voters. Mm-hmm. Sue Kim found his name, and he was absolutely upset, absolutely livid, not because his name was there, because he says so many Koreans are named Sue Kim. It's the most common name in Korea. Hmm. And when they come here, they keep the name. And they and he said, what upset him is that they have my Social Security number. Can't they see that the other person doesn't have my Social Security number? Yeah. I said, I know that. They know that. They have advertised this. They have a PowerPoint presentation which in which they advertise that they use Social Security number matches. So everyone thinks, oh, well, this is very sophisticated. They're not going to get innocent people. Inside the actual instructions for removing voters. It says where we have social security numbers, they don't have a lot, where we have them and they mismatch, the voter still remains on the double voter list. Mm -hmm. So even when they know they've got the wrong person, the wrong social security number. But of course, you're talking about people of this, on this list, a million and a half voters that are supposedly the same person have mismatched middle names. So you have all these, you have millions of voters who are changing their names to vote a second time in another state. Greg, what happens to a voter who's on this list when she or he walks into the polling place next Tuesday? Ah, well, in different states it's different. In some states they will find that their name is removed, and they will be then given a... um, an app, a what's called a provisional ballot. It's kind of a placebo ballot. It makes people not scream when their names are missing from the voter rolls because you get to fill out a piece of paper. But provisional ballots, if a race is tight, they're almost never counted mm-hmm. because your name is or isn't on the voter roll. The only thing that they check is was your name on the voter roll or not. Not whether you were removed unfairly. That's a big problem. The other reason, by the way, anyone listening, Boy, oh boy, you better vote, because in states like Georgia, if you're on this double voter list, and I want to remind you, if you're you're a member of a minority uh, group, the chances of one in seven, your name is on this double voter list in Georgia. There's a half a million names on it in Georgia. Half a million. If your name is on the list, you are given, you are put down as what's called an inactive voter. Now, what does that mean? It's just a, it's a term that they use saying you don't vote, even if you have been voting. If you miss this midterm election, if you don't vote early voting, absentee, or by Tuesday, you lose your right to vote in the presidential race. So you actually, even if you're on the list, you will have the right to vote Tuesday. But if you miss voting Tuesday, you don't get to vote for president in 2016. It's very subtle. It's very brilliant. And it's huge. So if someone finds out 
that they're on this list, as you've said that uh, they can. Yes, they can. What 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 should they do before they go to the poll? Is there anything they can do? Well, the, if you're in Georgia, get to the polls and vote. It will restore your right to vote. Uh, they're not knocking off all voters on the list. They're knocking off 10 to 20 percent, which, of course, means three-quarters of a million to a million people because there's seven million names altogether. So it's a big purge, but you can save your own vote if you simply, in Georgia, if you vote. In Virginia, you may get 41,000 people who've simply been erased. So you show up, they don't have your name, please insist on your, uh, on your ballot. But what I would do is I would check online to see if you're, first of all, check online at aljazeera.com, middle of the article, see if you're on the list. If you are on the list, please contact your county voting officials immediately and tell them, I did not vote in two states at once. I see my name here, and my name is missing from the voter rolls. Uh, I, I need this. Um, uh, please restore my name. You can also go to your county uh, board of elections uh, or state, the Secretary of State's website, type in your name. Almost every state allows you to look and see if you are an active voter permitted to vote. If you aren't, you got to re-register and you got to contact these people and scream bloody murder. Hmm. In some cases, your vote can't be saved. In most cases, it can be saved simply by the act of voting itself. But if you miss this race, I'm telling you, you're going to not be able to vote for president. That's what's so insidious about it. Hmm. And again, they are targeting black folk. And by the way, the one of the things that they're targeting very big is uh, we found that the number one cluster of, of evil voters, evil double voters, supposedly, is at Dr. Martin Luther King's old church, the Ebenezer Baptist Church. And according to the cross-check records, in a building of senior citizens next to the church, uh, all African-American residents, uh, that there are ten double voters, 10 people who are committing the go-to-jail crime of voting twice mm. in this uh, senior home next mm. to the uh, Dr. King's church. I went into, they let me go into the home and find these so-called double voters, and I found a Mr. Naylor, uh, knocked on the door. He had a Bible open on his table, and he put his hand on the Bible and said, I swear I have not voted in two states. And he said, by the way, he had filed a sworn and witness statement, which he sent to Louisiana saying, I am not voting in Louisiana. I'm only voting in Georgia. Please take my name off the Louisiana voter rolls or, or get my name off this list. He actually went through this whole rigmarole just to make sure that he could vote in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And it is the whole point is that they're trying to stop what is called because they're, they're aiming at voters, they're very upset that the churches are bringing voters to the polls on the Sunday, be, uh, on the Sundays leading up to normal election day, mm -hmm. in early voting. The souls to the polls operation, where people leave from church and bus vans, I've gone in these vans, um, has actually produced a higher turnout. Uh, you have a higher percentage of African Americans voting in states like Georgia than white voters. Mm -hmm. Greg, and because people are going from church. Let me let me ask you this. I uh, uh, I, I certainly do not doubt in in any way the uh, the racial component you're mentioning here, yes. um, because we've seen that in other elections in other ways. But for a person who is skeptical, who yes. ask, is this? an issue of discrimination against race, or is it a discrimination against party? How, how do you answer that question? The answer is both. They're using race as an easy way. That when they do common names, they know that they're going to get the minority voter. Mm -hmm. When they don't, when they ignore a mismatch of middle names, when they ignore junior-senior differences, when they ignore Social Security numbers, they know that they're going to capture millions of minority voters. And they know if they capture millions of minority voters, and this is the first attack, by the way, on the Asian American voter, that they're going to capture an awful lot of Democrats. That's just a fact. Yeah. So 
it may be that their intent is not eliminating the uh, Asian voters or uh, African American voters. Their intent is to eliminate Democrats, but they're doing it through the ugliest means. The, there's another way to um, get to change the vote, and that's to convince the uh, African Americans and Asian voters that, that you've got the better candidate. <laughs> but apparently, that's not as effective as simply stopping them from casting yeah. their their vote. Greg, I want to also, before we get off, uh, I want to talk about the challenge that this sets in front of us. What you've you've worked at this doggedly and uh, steadily and academically. What's the prescription for future elections in light of these kinds of attacks? We have to have a commitment in the United States of America to the right to vote. Dr. King started the Voting Rights March 60 years ago, and just because the Voting Rights Act was signed a half century ago doesn't mean that the battle is over. The Supreme Court has removed the most important segments of the Voting Rights Act. We have to make the decision that everyone in America votes and get rid of the accusation that um, that people of color especially um, vote illegally. They, If you don't make them show an ID that they're going to steal someone's identity and vote for them, that they're voting in several states at once, uh, that they have criminal records which prevent them from voting, but these, uh, these convicts are going to flood the voter rolls anyway. Um, they don't care if they go back to jail for voting again. Um, the, this is nonsense. We need to remove impediments to voting, not create more impediments to voting. That means a commitment to, and and we cannot allow a system where a, where a, a legal voter is prevented from voting. And that's what's going on. Too many elections are being won by people preventing people from voting rather than winning the vote. Greg Pallast is the New York Times bestselling author of The Best Democracy Money Can Buy and Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, among other books. Uh, his investigation for Al Jazeera America is titled Jim Crow Returns. Greg, I really do like you, and I really like being with you, but it every time we talk, you get me all disturbed and, and bothered, because what you're talking about today is profoundly un-American, to say nothing about being immoral, but what we have to start with making sure people know what's going on, and you're doing your part on that front in a way that nobody else is doing it. So, I've got to thank you for being with us again on State of Belief Radio and say this microphone is open to you anytime if you want to bother us or if perchance you see some positive movement and you can give us some hope. Well, anytime, Welton. You're you're, uh, an inspiration. And let me tell you, um, it's wonderful to hear your voice. You know, I was just at the Ebenezer Baptist Church where King preached. Yeah. And believe me, if um, what you have to do is you not only have to bring your brain to these to this election fight, but you have to bring your spirit. Yep. So thank you for that. Well, you bring both, and thank you a lot. We'll do it again soon.